This verse, remember this, folks. This verse is the greatest verse on the Trinity. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. You can use that argument. But that greatest verse has been chopped off. It's been chopped off because a certain section called the Yoanin comma. Within this Yoanin comma, it covers the salient phrase about the Trinity. And then the NIV, ESV, and majority, uh, or a lot of your modern Bible versions, they chop this off. So this is one of the verses you can definitely use to criticize the modern Bibles. However, they have manuscript evidence, superior manuscript evidence, supposedly. That's why they resorted to that. So I'm going to explain right here. 1 John chapter 5, and then we'll read verses 7 through 8. For there are three that bear record. All right. Now, after that, what you're going to find out is this. The rest of the part is deleted. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are, boom, right there. That's where the end of the uh, cutting off goes to. So it goes from the first part of verse 8, and there are, and then the last half of verse 7. Now, you cut off the Trinity right there, didn't you? So then what you're going to read is in verse 7, for there are three that bear record, and then you're going to jump to verse 8. The Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. So that's the most important verse on the Trinity in your Bible. But modern Bible critics, they cut that off. Why? Because it's known as the Yoanin comma, that particular phrase. And the Yoanin comma, the reason why is because they say this, majority. Now remember, we're supposed to be, the reason why we go with the King James Bible, it, it's because it comes from the majority of Greek manuscripts, right? So majority of Greek manuscripts support the King James Bible. That's why we would go with that. But guess what? The majority of Greek manuscripts go against the KJV. Instead, they support the modern Bibles here. They support the NIV, the ESV, and other modern Bibles. So the evidence of 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 is extremely weak. It supports this side. The KJV, it does not. So we should cut this off, right? Well, one, that's a really important verse on the Trinity, so I wouldn't cut it off. But here's the thing is that the evidence seems to support that. Not only that, they, a lot of these critics, they give this lame argument that Erasmus said he would include the verse, this Ioannin comma, if he found a Greek manuscript that contained it. Then almost made to order, almost made to order, hot off the presses, one appeared and then he just rushed it all in. So that sounds like something that James Big Fat White Lie would say and then John Anklebaum and Dan Wallace. But these guys, what they're going to do is that this is the kind of argument you're going to hear from critics. I'm not sh It sounds like when I listen to their teachings, they keep harping on those things, but I think they retracted now because there's e new evidence that shows that this is totally bogus, which I'm going to explain later on. But how are we going to answer this argument? First of all, the argument is this. The KJV, it does not mean that it has weak manuscript evidence. You got to realize this, the KJV is not just from majority of Greek manuscripts. It's a culmination of all manuscripts and then through something superior came out the King James Version. Now here's the thing is that the manuscript evidence right here is really filled up. First of all, we would include early church fathers. Early church fathers you got to realize this. We're not saying KJV is 100% from majority of Greek manuscripts. It's a large percentage, though, 90 to 99%. The remaining percentage is supported by ancient witnesses. That's it. And here are the ancient witnesses, early church fathers. These go back before the world's supposedly oldest manuscripts, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, which the modern Bibles come from. So... Sinaiticus, Vaticanus, which modern Bibles come from, these all go back to early centuries. That's what these modern Bibles come from. But these early church fathers are going to be earlier than that, some of them. 
these names would fail to include Vigilius Tapensis. Uh, Tapensis. This also ignores the evidence of Victor Vitensis in his Historia Perse Persecutionis. Uh, Fulgentius is another one in the Heavenly Three Witnesses. 500 AD, Cassiodorus cited it. Another one is 550 AD. The Speculum also has that. 636 AD, Isidora Seville quotes the verse as it stands in the King James Bible. Another one is 750 AD by Wizan Bergensis. A Latin manuscript contains a reference. So you see a numerous amount of church fathers. This fails to include Cyprian and Tertullian around the 200 ADs. So because these guys, Cyprian and Tertullian, are really good ones, the modern Bible critics will claim that they weren't really quoting 1 John 5, 7 that time. Well, you've got to realize this. What were these fathers quoting then? What were they quoting? Some of them said, it is written. You think they were just making that up? They, were, they knew there was a Bible verse out there that time. Some of them said it is written. But even let's suppose, let's suppose we discount all of those witnesses, which, you know, James Big Fat White Lie, he said in his debate, that basically, oh, these quotes of these early church fathers that they were quoting, that this was just misrepresented. They weren't really quoting them accurately. They were just saying something that the church fathers didn't mean to say. He just said that at a rash argument so that people don't catch that. That's how he wins debates, is by talking fast and changing ideas. That's how he wins. He doesn't deliberately take time for you to ponder on it so you can investigate it if it's so. So discounting all the early church fathers, let's say, let's discount all of them, okay? Which is really hard to do with historical evidence. You can't go around this one. They, the, the early churches, so this is a group of churches, all of them in unison. They all gathered together at the Council of Carthage at 484, and they held a confession of faith. This is what they said. They said, and so that we may teach the Holy Spirit to be of one divinity with the Father and the Son still more clearly than the light. Here is proof from the testimony of John the Evangelist. For he says, there are three who bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, uh, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Surely he does not, he does not say three separated by a difference in quality or divided by grades which differentiate look he gets even more specific about this passage i don't think you can dishon that is a dishonest blatant lie or oh, these people they're just quoting something that they didn't know that they didn't really mean to say and they just twist things out of context because they always take stuff from secondhand sources blah 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 see by talking like that you hardly keep up in your uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, like that i don't i have zero respect for those kind of scholars who are very dishonest and try to make KJV-only advocates dishonest and uh, not intellectual. I really despise that. So I will mock them and make fun of them. I'm not being mean to people out there who don't know much about this issue. If you don't know much about this, this is new information to you. And I don't treat you like that. But I don't have any respect for Walnuts and James Big Fat White Lie and John Anklebaum. I don't have respect for any of those guys. Amen. I have zero respect. I told you, if I rebuke people, I rebuke people without hesitation, without compromising. I do that, even with sarcasm if I have to. That's one argument, just one argument, early church fathers, all right? That's just one. Two, it's attested by the old Syriac Peshitta. You think Sinaiticus and Vaticanus are really ancient manuscripts that support the modern Bible? We got two as well. Old Syriac Peshitta and Old Latin. Old Syriac Peshitta, it goes as way back as 170 AD. Modern Bible scholars know this, so they will try to refute the date and try to refer to Curatonius, um, Syriac, something like that, all right? But then there are arguments that support it has to be Old Syriac Peshitta. I'm not going to get into all the arguments about Rabula, I think that's his name, and that during that time, both sides, when they had to split the Nestorians and the other group, that they actually used the Peshitta that time, so Rabula didn't make it up, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into that stuff, all right? Point is, is that it's uh, irrefutable, Old Syriac Peshitta, 170 AD, and Old Latin, which they had from Antiochian missionaries in 120 ADs and finished it at 157. AD. See, modern Bible critics know these two ancient manuscripts, so they will try to argue against it that's a later date.
but you can't go around it when you study the arguments here. For one, uh, I, uh, I gave a little tidbit of Peshitta, a little tidbit of the old Latin, is that one example, Theodore Beza, Calvin's successor, he said the Vaudois received this Bible from Antiochian missionaries at 120s ADs and finished it like around 157 AD. But that's just one argument, all right? I'm not going to get into there. Okay, point is this. So we got the old Syriac Peshitta that contains partially of 1 John 5, 7 through 8. Because if you read back at 1 John 5, 7 through 8, you'll, you'll notice that verse 8, and there are three, right? So old Syriac Peshitta did not delete that. It retained that part. So it partially retained the Ioannin comma. The old Latin retained the full thing. It retained the whole thing. These fail to include Latin manuscripts such as M, P, C, D, E, M, D, I, V, and Q. So these would fail to include these Latin manuscripts. An uh, another thing is that we got to understand that there's another argument, not just Old Syriac Peshitta and Old Latin, but another argument is that, so they argue majority of Greek manuscripts, right? Here's the thing. It's a question mark. Well, no, the majority of Greek manuscripts today support it exactly. Today, you don't know how many there were back then that became extinct. See, they don't think like that. What about the originals at that time? See that? See, they don't think about that. In fact, all scholars are going to have to agree, KJV Bible translators, they used manuscripts that even modern Bible translators cannot use today because they're extinct. They're gone. So you don't, re you don't know what the majority or superior or dependable Greek manuscripts there were back then. As a matter of fact, this is proven by several, by several people. These were notable Christians. Oh, by the way, before I, mention major uh, before I mention the Greek manuscripts, there are today Greek manuscripts that support 1 John 5, 7 through 8. There are Greek manuscripts. That doesn't mean there's none. And some of them are even before the 1600s KJV. So when people argue that Erasmus and all these people, they didn't have access to these Greek manuscripts because such Greek manuscripts did not exist at their time period, they did not know what kind of Greek manuscripts there were because these Greek manuscripts we have today are even older than Erasmus and other people. This will fail to include 0, 1, 4th century, A, 5th century, B, 4th century, K, which is 9th century, L, which is 8th century, P, which is 9th century. So these are all unseals. This will also fail to include 0, 4, 8, 5th century, 0, 4, 9, 9th century, 0, 5, 6, 10th century, 0, 1, 4, 2, 10th century, 0, 2, 9, 6, 6th century. Okay? They give you the idea that there's practically no Greek manuscripts. It's not that old. It's like something recent and new. But not only that, it may be you don't know what kind of Greek manuscripts they had at that time, which are very old and dependable, that you don't have access to today. So you can't really use this argument. Because let me give some examples. John Calvin. All right, I'm sure James White would love his idols, so we'll go with him. Okay, John Calvin. There are three that bear record in heaven. The whole of this verse has been omitted uh, has been uh, by some omitted. So look at that. Even they knew about this issue, textual issue. Jerome thinks that this has happened through design rather than through mistake, and that indeed only on the part of the Latins. But as even the Greek copies do not agree, I dare not assert anything on the subject. Since, however, the passage flows better when this clause is added, when this clause is added, and as I see that it is found in the best and most approved copies, I am inclined to receive it as the true reading. Here's another quotation by Gill, uh, Gill's exposition of the entire Bible. This is talking about now the manuscripts underlying the Complutentian polyglot. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. But those who are textual critics and scholars, they know about this Bible, the Polyglot Bible. Because this Bible actually was built up by manuscripts that modern Bibles don't even have today, actually. So this Bible is really important and valuable. 
the manuscripts underlining the polyglot and the 16 ancient copies of Stephanus. Stephanus is one of the TR Greek manuscripts, which no longer exists today. All right. Here's the documentation from this. And as to its being wanting in some Greek manuscripts concerning 1 John 5, 7 through 8, as the Alexandrian and others, it need only be said that it is to be found in many others. It is an old British copy. And in the Complutensian edition, the compilers of which made, that's talking about the polyglot, which made use of them various copies and out of the 16 ancient copies of Robert Stevens, nine of them had it. But they don't have those, they, scholars say they can't have access to those things anymore. They're gone. Who are they to say majority of Greek manuscripts? You don't know what kind of Greek manuscripts they had back then, including the KJB translators. And they know that too. But they'll give you this misrepresentation, this argument that they didn't have such access to those things. They're trying to hide that the modern Bible translators themselves, they don't have the access to what the KJV translators had. Tricky, 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 evil, wicked people, as Dr. Upman uh, rightfully called them, and I will still reproach them with scoffing, they are professional, professional. They don't sound like amateurs. They're such professional liars, Amen. professional liars. So. This is bogus about the manuscript evidence for 1 John 5 through 7 through 8. There is much manuscript evidence more amazing than you think.